Hey everybody, my name's Gavin, and today I am going to teach you everything I can about Adobe Premiere Pro in 10 minutes. This is meant to be the beginner's guide, so let's just start off by booting up Premiere Pro here. While this is booting, I think it's nice to know that Adobe actually offers a free 7-day trial if you want to try out Premiere Pro. So I left a link to that in the description if you want to join along, or if you just want to try it out later. Okay, so Premiere Pro has booted up. This is the latest version, version 24.1, so yours may or may not look a little different than mine does. So what we're going to do is just start a new project. We'll come up to the left hand side here and click on new project. We'll give our project a name. So I'll just do Premiere Pro beginner. And now we have to choose a project location. Then all we have to do is click create and we have our first project. Now it's likely that your project will look something like this. If it doesn't look like this, then you can come up to this top right hand corner, which is the workspaces corner, and you can click on editing. Sweet. So now what we have to do is we have to import some assets. Now this could be video, it could be images, whatever you're using in your project. But first I'm going to make a folder to import these assets into. All we have to do to do that is come down to this bottom left hand corner and click new bin and that will create a bin in our project panel here. And by project panel, I mean this panel right here. And we will name this bin B-roll. Then I am going to double click inside of this bin and right click and then click import. I'm going to import these two shots right here and click open. And as you can see, they populate in the project panel right here. So now what we want to do is create a sequence. Basically a sequence is when you put the clips together on one timeline and basically create a video from those clips. So one way to create a sequence is simply by dragging the footage that you have onto the timeline, which is this little panel here. And as you can see, when we do that, our footage shows up on the timeline as a layer. And we also see it in our playback window as we drag the playhead along this layer. The playhead is just what I'm dragging in the timeline here. And so we've made our first sequence that will show up in the project panel here. This is the sequence and these two shots to the left are the footage that we first imported. Now we created a sequence with this footage here, which means that when we come up to this top bar and click on sequence and then sequence settings, these settings are the same settings of the footage that we dragged onto the timeline. If we want to change our sequence settings, say we want to make the frame size 1920 by 1080, so we would be going from 4K to 1080p, and we'll click OK. And you can see that it crops in on our footage, and now our sequence is actually 1920 by 1080p. But I'm just going to undo that. We are going to keep our sequence at the original 4K quality. And now I want to drag the other piece of footage onto the timeline so that we don't just have this water, but we also have this nebula. So we'll click on the nebula and drag that into our timeline next to the other footage. As you can see, when we play it, there's a nice little transition between the water and the nebula shot. So now I'm going to cover some basic tools that you can use to get started on your journey. Let's start out with the selection tool. This is the tool that you will be using most of the time when you're in Premiere. Basically, this allows you to do pretty much anything and click on anything. So say we want to shorten this first clip so that it ends at this point where the playhead is. All we have to do is drag the end of this clip over to the playhead and it will end where the playhead is. Now, if your clip didn't snap to the playhead like mine did, then you just need to toggle on this little snap in timeline button, and then your clip should snap. And then we can also drag this clip over so that there's no black space in between the clips, and we still have that seamless transition between the two. Now, instead of dragging over, just to save a little bit of time, you can also click in this blank space, and it'll highlight white, and you can hit backspace, and it deletes the space. Just a cool little trick. Let's move on to the next tool, which is the track select forward tool. And so basically what this does is we will duplicate this layer just so you can see another example here. If you want to select these two clips here at the same time, you could click and drag your mouse over them. But if you have a ton of clips that are stacking on each other and you have a big long timeline, then that's just a lot more difficult for you to do. So instead, what you can do is use the track forward select tool, or you can click A on your keyboard, and it will select everything to the right of where you click. And if we click and hold on the track forward select, you also see the track select backward. And this is basically the same thing, just backwards. Cool. Let's delete these. Now let's click and hold on the ripple edit tool and we see the rate stretch tool. So the rate stretch tool is actually really cool. Let's say we want to make this clip go a little bit faster because it's really slow. So with our rate stretch tool, you can also click R on the keyboard to get there. Just drag from the end of this clip and let's go to here. And as you'll see, the clip is really fast now. So basically it speeds it up. If you want to slow down a clip, you can drag this out and now that clip is very slow. Awesome, we're getting somewhere. The remix tool I will come back to, but let's go on to the razor tool below. This just basically allows you to make cuts in your footage as you like. Then below we have the pen tool. So you can basically draw whatever you want over your footage. And when you do this, it will make a layer on your timeline. 
I'm just gonna delete that. And then finally with the tools, we have the type tool. You'll likely use this one a lot. You just click and then you can type something. We'll say galaxy. And as you can see, we get some text on our screen here. If we click and hold control, you can drag it to the middle and it will snap to the middle there. We can see those little guidelines. But you know what? This text kind of sucks. It's a little boring. So I'm gonna come over to the effect controls panel, twirl down the text, and I'm gonna change the source text to a font called TT Commons. And then I'm gonna up the size to 400, make it a lot bigger. And now, as you can see, we have a much bigger font. We can drag it, click control, put that in the middle. And I'm also just going to scroll down here. We can see you can add a stroke. So if you wanted maybe a pink stroke, you could have that. You could add a shadow to your text. And yeah, now you have text over your video. Now let's say you want to fade the text in. All you have to do is come over to your effects panel, or you can click shift seven to get there. Come to video transitions, twirl down dissolve, and then you can drag a cross dissolve onto the beginning of your text layer in the timeline. And now I'm going to actually double click this and make it longer so that you can see the effect in the playback window here, it fades in. Now let's add a little bit more to this text. You know, I want, I want it to move around a little bit. So I'm actually just gonna make a little simple animation and this is called keyframing. Now when you're keyframing, it's basically a simple animation where you set an in point and an out point. So what we're gonna do is start from the beginning of this text layer and I'm gonna come over to the effect controls and I'm gonna click this little stopwatch for toggle animation. And we're gonna do that for the scale. And so as you can see, now we get a little keyframe that shows up right here. And if you aren't sure if you're selected on that keyframe, you can use the right and left arrows to see. So right now we're not because this is grayed out. But now if we go left one keyframe, then it is. And we have our active keyframe right here. So I'm going to drop the scale down to 50, which means the text will be smaller when it starts out. And then we will come to the end of our text layer here in the timeline. And I'm actually going to go one keyframe to the left and I'm going to scale it back up to 100. And now, as you can see, if we play this animation, Galaxy is scaling up with our nebula in the background. Great, beautiful. But this is a linear scale. Like it's just kind of a boring one-to-one -one scale. So what I'm gonna do is select both of these keyframes back in the effect controls panel. So click on one, hold shift and click on the other. And then I'll right click and click ease in. Now, so you can see what that actually did is I'll undo that. We can see that is the linear scale right there. When I ease in the scale, is no longer linear it's a lot smoother and i'm also going to ease out and so we have a very smooth transition here now if we play this back it starts slow gets a little faster and then slowly ends so it's a little more dynamic and one thing that i really like to do with these zooms is click on this last keyframe here and click and drag this little playhead in making sure we keep the line flat and as you can see it starts fast and then slows down. So that's a really cool dynamic keyframe animation that I use quite a lot. And if you're struggling with this zoom and you wanna learn a little bit more about how to do it, you can check out this video above. Now let's say we want to change the color on this background. Let's say we want it to be a lot more colorful, just a little more vibrant. Let's come over to the effects panel here and type in Lumetri color. And then we will drag this color effect onto our background. And as you can see in our effects panel, now we have a new effect the Lumetri color effect. And I'm just gonna twirl down basic correction here. There's a lot more that goes into this, but all I'm gonna do is mess with the saturation and bump that up. And so when we bring that up to 175, now we go from this still cool looking nebula, but kind of dull in comparison to this almost fantasy looking nebula. And yeah, that's the power of Lumetri color. I use it in almost every project. Now let's say we wanna add some music. Now I actually have a music folder that I'm just going to drag in here and let's select a calm song. I'm going to zoom out on my timeline just so we can get the full picture by clicking minus. You can also zoom into the timeline by clicking plus. But now I will drag this audio layer down to one of the audio tracks. So these are audio tracks below this line here and everything above are video tracks. So I'll drag it onto the first audio track. And now, as you can hear, we have some nice music for our beautiful shots. But this is where the remix tool that I was telling you about comes into play. Why would we want the music to be this long? It's just a little too long for our footage. So we could go into the footage and just make a cut here and end it. But that's, you know, it's a little bit abrupt. So we're actually going to be using Adobe's remix tool to just shorten this for us. If we click on the audio and drag it to the end of the Nebula clip, it'll do some clip analysis and then boom. Now our audio ends 
pretty much where our clip ends. Now it's not perfect, but this is like close enough to where you can make the adjustments that you need in your music choices later. Now let's say we want to make this audio a little quieter. We can right click on this, go to audio gain, and let's do minus 15. Now, as you can see, the waveforms have gone down. They've gotten smaller. It's just a lot quieter. So that's all we have time for. But if you got through and understood most of this video, then you're already on a great path to becoming a great video editor. I hope this short tutorial was helpful for you. If you want to do some really cool things with Premiere Pro, then you can check out some of my other videos as well. And again, if you want to try Premiere Pro for free, you can click the link in the description to get a seven day free trial. And as always, thanks for watching.